What's going on guys? So over here, more out of life, we've decided that we want to go ahead and kind of give you all a walk around our camper and show you all some of the necessity tools and items that we have that make camping with a camper so much easier. That didn't make sense at all, but anyway. So we're gonna start over here at the front. First of all, when your camper is not in use, I highly recommend a hitch lock. That just keeps people from, you know, stealing. The next thing we have is this hitch here, which a lot of y'all may not know what this is. This is called a weight distribution anti-sway hitch. What it does is these bars will lock up in here and then it hooks to the truck. I'm sorry, I have that backwards. And it goes and it locks in on the camper and to your truck. And as you're going down the road, it keeps your trailer from swaying side to side or getting away from you. It also helps take a lot of the weight from the front of the tongue and puts it on your actual receiver. And that there is just a night and day difference, first and foremost. So over here to the storage bin first, if you have a camper, these guys are a 100% necessity. These are your leveling blocks. They're kind of like giant Legos, if you will. They lock into each other. And what these are for is you put these underneath of your tires and then you back up over them and that's what levels your sight. That's, one of, that's the easiest way to do it. Actually, I shouldn't say that's the easiest way to do it. That's what works for us. We do have the Beach Lane Easy Setup Kit. But we went out and got this. And this does not work with our camper the way it is right now. Because, here, come on over here. I'll show you all. You're supposed to put these underneath of your wheels, and as you roll over them, there's supposed to be one there and one there. It don't fit. <laughs> so, we'll use these for the next camper we get. But as you go and you get this level to where you need it, you take your small block, and it locks underneath of there, and that's how that setup works. If our wheels were just a little farther apart, it would work great, but another handy tool is a level. I've got another system in there. We'll show you here in a few minutes as to how it works, but a level first and foremost, you've got to have. The next item, it's not a necessity, but you can Trust me, you're gonna want these guys. These are called X chocks. And these guys, oh, going the wrong way here. These guys ratchet out. And they go between your wheels like so. You will go. And you put them in between there and you cinch them down. By doing this, you have no rotation between either one of your tires. And there's an X chalk that goes between both wheels on each side. That there, like I said, that is not that, that is not a need. That is definitely a want, but it comes in so much handy. It that didn't make sense at all. You know what I mean. So these things are great. It helps whenever you have everything stabilized. That's the extra amount of protection that you have for whenever you're walking around in the camper, you don't feel it move at all or anything like that. So that comes in handy and it's well worth the investment. And these are name brand X chocks. You don't have to get name brand guys. They make other things that may be a little bit cheaper that do the exact same job.
The next thing that is definitely a necessity, these screens do not come onto the camper. That you have to buy these separately and install them. Installing the maintenance pad at all, I did it in a matter of like three minutes. But these, if you can see, you move them out of the way, you have holes in here. This is for your kitchen system, your refrigerator, your stove, microwave. It's an air breathing system. So mud divers, wasps, and bees will get in here and build nests and whatnot. And it kind of clogs your system up. So this keeps all the bugs and critters out of your system. So you don't have to go in and take it all apart and clean it all out. Must have. All right, I'm gonna wear gloves for this part, guys, because this is where all your main water line and your sewage stuff hangs out. We have, if you come over here, we already have a built-in sewer hose that is here in our bumper. But from doing a lot of research, I found a better system that's more durable that I like a lot better. And that system is the Rhino. So this is your main sewer line. It has caps where you really don't have to smell it all the time. When people think of going camping and RVing, this is the part everybody really thinks down upon. And I'm here to tell you, it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, it's gross, but it, it could be a lot worse. They make a lot of things now that make it, you know, pretty tolerable. So this here is going to be your dump line. I'll actually go ahead and I'll kind of set this up and show you all how our setup is. The first piece of equipment that comes off of my rig is the clean out elbow. So what this does here, and this is not necessary, this is just tools that we found that work best for what we have going on. So this snaps into here, and then I have another on and off valve. That's gonna go and snap in there. And then you take your cap off. And that snaps in just like that. So I'll walk through how all this works. If you come down here, come on down. This handle that is black is your black water. Your black water is your sewage and waste. Over here is your gray water valve. That is all your shower and your sink. So it's your cleaner of your disposable water. You always wanna dump your black water first and then you dump your gray. That kind of cleans everything out. But to make things in your black water tank more bearable, you have your specific black water rinsing hose out. At every clean out station I've ever had, they've already had a water spigot there. So you're gonna go, you're gonna hook this up into there and then as you turn water on, you turn this valve on, and then it shoots water up in here. Leave this valve closed, and what it does is it shoots all the way up into your black water tank and kind of cleans out a bunch of the toilet paper and muck that is in there. Now on this specific camper, we do have a black water sprinkler system that is on the other end. You can hook this same hose up to it and it turns sprinkler heads on inside of the black water and cleans everything out as well but this system here works really well. All right, the other piece of sewage item that you have to have, we don't have to have it, but if you travel out of different states, then this is definitely required in some parts. This is what's known as the stinky slinky holder. <laughs> if I could get this thing open.
This is how this system works. What it does is it gets all your pipes and everything up off of the ground. On this side of the camper, as you can see, you're gonna have a lot of stuff that's gonna be set up and here is in the general area. And we make it a rule when we are camping that the children and guests that we have really don't come over here because it's nothing and when it's dark outside for you to come and just trip over all the equipment. You'll see here in a minute, we have a lot more lines that we hook up and stuff. And it's just kind of, this is the utility area. There's nothing for kids to really be playing around with over here. So this comes down, it rests on top of here and it's kind of a downward slope that goes down into your main sewage dump site. And this is how the stinky slinky holder works. This here as well as being called your main dump sewer line. It's also nicknamed through a lot of the campers and RVers as the stinky slinky. Obviously, for much given reasons, it stinks. The last thing that I have to say about the sewer system that is utmost importance on top of wearing gloves is get yourselves a bottle of hand sanitizer and make sure that whenever you are done dealing with any of your sewer system to make sure that you sanitize your gloves and you sanitize your hands as well. The last thing you want to do is be out camping and catch some nasty disease, you know. Because you are, you are dealing with human waste and that's Lord knows. <laughs> We're going to move on to the electrical system of hookup. This RV that we have or camper, however you want to refer to it, is a 30 amp unit. So coming off of, whenever you pull up to a site, you're going to have an electrical box and your water hookup, and sometimes if it's full hookup, you'll have sewer piping there as well. We've already covered the sewer pipes. So what's gonna happen, this is a surge protector. A lot of people do not use these, but it's almost a necessity if you're gonna be camping a lot to make sure you get one of these guys. They are a little pricey, but it's just that much added protection because the cost of something breaking in here because of a power surge or lights out, anything like that is just really expensive. So the first and foremost, you got your 30 amp hookup to this guy here. It'll hook up inside of your power connection. And then from there, you have your main power line that hooks up into there. From there, you hook up your power source to your camper and they screw and lock in. And just like that, your power is ready to go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and talk about our main water in. This is for if you have water at the site that you are camping at. We do have onboard fresh water tank on this rig. However, we try to camp in places that have the full hookups. So, all right, so here is your city water connection. This is your main water in. One of the things that we found through a lot of research and just wear and tear strain, get yourself a 90 degree elbow. If not, your water hose with the weight of the water is pulling down on your plastic connectors here and it could eventually break. So what we found works great is to have a 90 degree water connector that comes down and then you will go and hook your water up. Follow your line over to where your water source is going to be at. And from here, we have a water filter. These last a long time, guys. They really do. So this isn't one thing that you have to buy, you know, every single time you go out. One of these ought to last you two seasons or so. So from there, we bought an adapter that goes into the end here. And then this piece here, I cannot stress enough. This is a water pressure regulator. Some places where you will camp have bad water pressure, too powerful of a water pressure, or too low. 
you can work with not enough water pressure, but it's good to know. So what you will do here is if it has too much water pressure built up going into your camper, then it'll blow out the pressure here and then try to regulate you the best that it can. This whole system will hook up into your water spigot that's there at your campsite. And then as soon as you turn it on, you'll see this raised up to about 40 to 45. That's my goal pressure. So from here, it tones it down to 40 to 45 pounds. It goes into the RV system. And then at that pressure, you shouldn't have any leaks or problems caused by overpowered water. If you have too much water pressure and it's going inside of your camper, you have the potential to destroy your shower, your toilet, your sink systems, your outdoor shower, anything like that. Every, every piece of equipment that you have inside is, is on the cheaper end of things and they can't hold as much pressure as like your house could, so to say. So that's why it is important to make sure you have a water pressure regulator to make sure that nothing bad is in out. As I said before with the sewer system, always make sure you have spare hoses and you have different colored hoses. We had the orange hose set up for our black water and we have a clean fresh water blue hose. And that's important. You don't want to cross those two guys. The last thing we have to do with the hookups and electrical wise are these extra gaskets. It may not seem like something you would think about, but the last thing you want is a leak spreaking out from your spigot or going into your camper or anything like that. So I bought these, I think I picked these up from Camping World for like $2, and there's 10 gaskets in here. You know, it's just a good thing to always keep on you. All right, in this cubby here, we have our rear jacks for stabilization. It's kind of a, a good spot just to kind of keep this stuff. You know, there's not much to describe about them other than they're jacks. The other thing I have in here are grease tubes, along with the hitch that you saw at the beginning of the video. You always want to keep a grease gun and grease tubes where you can just grease all those moving parts up. Remember, if it moves, it needs grease. And in the last compartment we have up here, we have all of our random leveling blocks and stuff like that. It's always good to have extras because you never know if you got to stack three or four blocks high at a campground or if you need more chocks that's necessary or anything like that. So that's the last compartment. We'll go inside and talk about some things in there. All right, guys, welcome to the inside of the camper. I'm sure you've all have seen it before. Just a little camp ramp in here. We don't have the slide pushed out yet. So, the first thing I'd like to talk about in here is this is a flat iron grill. You can also get similar items like this called Blackstones, and this is the 17 inch model. This here, it's not a necessity once again, but this has made cooking on our camp trips that much easier and better. So inside of here you have a single burner, ignore all of our junk, we keep everything that we cook with in one similar area. We have our one pound propane bottle, our spatulas, and our propane regulator that hooks in over here. Once it's all set up, it has the single burner that does a U-shape inside of here and it heats up this surface to be really hot. Hot enough to cook with, hey hey. So that cover, oh. And then you have your, your catch tray and everything like that. It works great guys, it really does. The next thing I want to talk about, which a lot of people, once again, do not think about, damp rids. And there is quite a bit of water in here. Water is a camper's nightmare. Everything that's inside of a camper is on the lower quality and lightweight side of things. So any moisture that's inside of here will ruin your appliances, your walls, your furniture, things like that. So you want to make sure that you keep some of these damp rids, or you know, they make off brands as well, inside of your camper. That'll go and filter out a lot of the moisture out of the air and kind of keep it in one general location. We have one in the kitchen, one in the bathroom, and back in here we have a closet whenever the slides open, and we have a hanging one that we keep in there. And it's amazing how much moisture it pulls out. 
So the next thing we want to talk about is this guy here. Well, actually, let's take this outside and we'll set it up. So this here is our portable fold-up wagon. Boom, just like that. Oh, forgot the back wheels. And just like that, this thing is heavy duty and it works out great. Especially if you have guests that are camping with you. Sometimes they don't allow other vehicles inside of the camper lots with you. So it's cool to have something like this to where you can meet your guest in the guest lot, load all their stuff up and then just walk back to your camper. It makes it that much easier. Plus having kids, if you ever wanna go on a walk around the park or something like that, throw the kids in here getting their cups you can rock and roll as well this does have cup holders for your beverage of choice and it has a pocket here so that's the wagon oh we we bought this at Harbor Freight um, I'm kind of skeptical about some of the stuff you could buy there but this was a pretty neat buy and it's it's good quality it's made out of steel and a pretty tough canvas so, one of the other things we'd like to talk about here inside of the camper is whenever your refrigerator and freezer are not in use, it can build mold. We learned this the first time we went out and then we cleaned everything and shut it up, came out to camp out, ne camp out the next time, and we had some mold growing in here. Luckily, the lovely people at Camping World have already thought about this. You can buy this attachment here for about $5. And what it does is it goes through. It's kind of funny to get in here. There we are. It goes through and it just keeps your door slightly propped. And you can open and close both doors at the same time. It's just, it lets light in there and lets air flow in there for mold cannot grow in their nasty, wet, dark places. So that's what we have cosmetic-wise. So, the last piece of gear we would like to talk about that we have inside of the camper is this little guy right here. This is called the Levelmate Pro. Zoom in on that. The Levelmate Pro is an electronic sensor that you download an app on your phone and it tells you exactly how level your camper is. It works out really great whenever your truck is already hooked up to your camper and you're trying to find the best level spot inside of your campground. And all you do, I would show you but it's not on right now. You pull out your phone, you open up your app and it automatically tells you how, you, how level you are this way and then how level you are this way. You back forward and backwards to try to find out where your best spot is, and then you press set. So now it knows that this is level and everything like that. That has made setup on campsites so much easier. And that is a piece of equipment I will take with me to the next camper that we would be purchasing. So we'll meet y'all back outside and we'll wrap this video up. So that was a kind of a quick walkthrough of our camper and some of the necessity items that we have found that works best for us on camp trips. In the next camp out to come, Jenny has already said that she'd like to film me kind of setting up and getting everything ready because we could talk about it here on dry ground all day long, but until you're actually doing it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And on the upcoming camp out, we're gonna make sure that we film everything to show you how putting up and tearing down goes, where everything's at, and how it all looks when it's all hooked up completely. So thanks for watching guys. This is kind of a not typical vlog, but hey, I think it's pretty neat to do videos like this and kind of show you what works best for us. Thanks for watching, and we will go from there.